said a lot of people saw her at protests, but what people don't know was her most important job was to be my mora. And I, I hope that uh, you'll understand maybe as the years go by that she was a very good mora. When she was uh, just about to die, she took her mask off and she started talking. And what she said was rather amazing. She said, my neshama, and there were nurses and doctors there who witnessed this. She said, my neshama volunteered to come back to earth to accomplish two missions. One of them was to bring you home. The other was to bring you home as a Jew and not a Goy. She said, it's very easy to bring a Jew out of Galut back to Eretz HaKodesh. But she said, it's really, really hard to get the Galut out of the Jew. She said, bringing you home was very easy. <laughs> Not so easy. No, she said, it was very easy. But she said, getting the Galut out of your head was a very, very hard job. And it took her 37 years. She said, I'm happy that I succeeded in both missions. And now I can go home. And that's when she went down. So I was left, you know, wondering, who was she? What was she? So as I said before, the most amazing thing about her was she was my mora. And she worked very hard to ensure that I came home as a Jew. When we first got here, she said, there is a war coming and I won't be here to help you. And she meant that not just for me, but for everybody. So what war? She said, there's a wall around Eretz HaKodesh, a wall. And she said, this wall is not like Jabotinsky's wall of bricks and stones and guns and guards and bombs and things. She said, there's a wall. And as usual, I didn't understand what she was talking about. So she explained it in a different way. She said, in every international airport, whether it's Ben Gurion or Leonardo da Vinci in Rome or Charles de Gaulle in, Fra in Paris or Heathrow or JFK, they have passport control. So you come and you show them your passport. And she said, they ask you questions. Who are you? Where were you born? Why are you here? All these questions. No, it's okay, thank you. Thank you. And if you pass these questions correctly, you get to enter the country. But she said, you don't come into Italy as an Italian citizen. You come in as a visitor, a foreigner, but you can come in. Same with any other airport, including Ben Gurion. She said, the wall is actually around Eretz HaKodesh, she said, is Halacha. And inside what it's guarding, she said, is Am Yisrael. It has to be maintained pure and consistent. 
with halacha. Because the war is coming and only the purest army can be used in this war that's coming, the Giula. So she said, in this wall, there's a very small gate. This is passport control. And that's Shar Harabanut. That's what she called it, Shar Harabanut. And they're responsible for asking, who are you? Where do you come from? Where were you born? Who is your mother? And if you don't pass those questions, you don't come in to the Am, um, to the Mishpacha. Because she said, the greatest danger we have is the Erev Rav. And she said, the role of the Am um is to stand on the wall and to protect it, to make sure that people don't come in through the back way. She said, the purity of our people is absolutely essential for the war that's coming. Because depending on how pure we are, will determine how much emunah and betuchon we have. And she said, those are the weapons that are, will be crucial to make a distinction between whether the Giyula Shlema comes as a kiss or as a hit, a shmais, with blood and, and horrible destruction. The Giyula will come, but at a terrible price. We have to maintain the purity of the Am at all costs so that we win this victory, Al Kiddush Hashem, with a kiss. So I listened, and I still don't really <laughs> understand what she's talking about until the new government came in. <laughs> she was a prophet, she was a Nivia. And, and then I understood what she meant. During Yom Yerushalayim last year, it was pretty bad for all of you who lived in Jerusalem. I'm sure you remember this. Mm -hmm. Well, one, I don't know how it happened, but we ended up at Damascus Gate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a balagan. This was not a peaceful protest. This wasn't about civil rights or human rights. I know enough Arabic to know it's Bachar al Yahud. I know what that means. You mean Shechemgate, not Damascus. Yeah. 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 No, Shechem's Arab. Yeah. It's our city. Yeah. He, he was in Shechem with us. Yeah. It's your city. So, it was pretty bad, and the police weren't doing anything. So Esther finally, you know, said, okay. She went up to the police commander, pulled his arm, and said, hey, why don't you clear them out? They're waving Hamas flags in Yerushalayim. Why don't you apply the law? She didn't say go shoot people. She said apply the law. Arrest them. Get rid of them. This is a Chilul Hashem. And he gave her 10 minutes, at least, of political excuses of why you can't hurt these people because it'll be an international incident and the Americans won't like it. And finally, after about 10 minutes, she said, Shtuyot, and walked away. They know who, they and, know who she and, is? And she, and she, she is? Hmm? And the police know who she is? Yes, of course. So she came over to me, and she crossed her arms, and she started smiling. So I said, why are you smiling? And she said, because for the first time, I understand why Rav Akiva smiled and laughed when he looked at the ruins of the Beit HaMikdash and saw the foxes. He saw the Gula. <laughs> and she said, look, this is, this is proof that the Gula is coming. And she said, again, remember she said what I told you about the wall, depending upon our Emunah and Betachon, with these animals, our Giyula will come either with much sorrow and hardship and blood, or it will come with a kiss. And they will disappear and Moshiach will fight our battles. 
been one night. Esther was at a meeting with me in New York in a very, very nice apartment on the Upper West Side. I don't know why we were invited, except for the fact that the food was very good. It was glatt kosher, it was, it was excellent. And there was a man there, a rabbi, so-called rabbi. He wasn't a rabbi. Who started talking about us, us, that we were the murderers of children, with us. I'm Israel. 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 Yeah. That our army is trained specifically to kill children. <laughs> that we are robbers of other people's lands. And that we are practitioners of apartheid. The successors to the Afrikaners in South Africa. And I was watching Esther and she's turning red. So I started eating very quickly at that point because I know we're going to be invited. <laughs> so she finally slapped the table and said, enough, 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 enough. I have three questions for you. <clears throat> and she said, do you feel the pain of your brothers? Do you really feel it? And she meant sisters as well, but brothers, collectively. And he said, um, no. She said, do you feel the pain of the land? This was when the balloons were coming out of Gaza and burning the Negev. She said, the land is living. It's Eretz HaKodesh. It's connected to the Am. We feel pain, the land feels pain, the land feels pain, we feel pain. And he really didn't understand what that was all about. And the third question she asked him was, do you feel the fear of our children when they're running to the bomb shelters and they're told you have 10 seconds, the little kids, and they're counting as they're running, Chaj, Daim, Shalosh, as they're running. And she said, what I'm asking you is, do you feel the fear of our future? Because our children, our Yeladim, are our future. So do you feel fear for our future? He didn't answer. He said, I, 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 there are Palestinian children in, in Gaza. That they, she said, I'm not talking about the enemy children. I'm talking about our children, our future. He didn't. And she said, well... You're not a Jew, you're Erev Rav. And then I was looking for the door. <laughs> so he asked her, who are you? So she pointed at me and she said, I'm Jonathan Pollard's wife. And I said, I'm going to jail now for sure. <laughs> But these were the three critical issues in her life that she used to determine the nature of the individual that she was dealing with. Do you feel the pain of your brothers? I remember Esther and I, she was visiting me in prison during the Heat Not Hood. And to be honest with you, I don't think she ever understood how that could happen. And she said to me at that point, when we were watching those horrible, horrible scenes, do you feel their pain? I said, yeah, horribly. And she said, do you feel the pain of the land as they're, as they're tearing it up? I said, yeah. I can feel it. And she said, look at these children we were watching on TV, crying. She said, do you feel their fear? Especially for the future. What will happen to these children in the future? They're affecting our future. And I was so shocked by what I saw, I couldn't even answer. And my Mora patted me on the shoulder. 
and she said, you're, you're getting ready to go home. <laughs> because only a Jew could feel these things. Moment. 